Today we are reading Mr. Popper's Penguins by Richard and Florence Atwater, Chapter 3. Out of the Antarctic What with the excitement of having the great Admiral Drake speak to him over the radio, and his curiosity about the Admiral's message to him, Mr. Popper did not sleep very well that night. He did not see how he could possibly wait to find out what the Admiral meant. When morning came, he was almost sorry that he had nowhere to go. No houses to paint, no rooms to paper. It would have helped him pass the time. Would you like the living room papered over? He asked Mrs. Popper. I have quite a lot of paper number 88 left over from the mayor's house. I would not, said Mrs. Popper firmly. The paper on now is plenty good enough. I am going to the first meeting of the Ladies' Aid and Missionary Society today, and I do not want any mess around to clean up when I get home. Very well, my love, said Mr. Popper meekly, and he settled down with his pipe, his globe, and his book of Antarctic adventures. But somehow, as he read today, he could not keep his mind on the printed words. His thoughts kept straying away to Admiral Drake. What could he have meant by a surprise for Mr. Popper? Fortunately for his peace of mind, he did not have to wait very long at all. That afternoon, while Mrs. Popper was still away at her meeting, and Janie and Bill had not yet come home from school, there was a loud ring at the front door. I suppose it is just the postman. I wouldn't bother to answer it, he said to himself. The bell rang again, a little louder this time. Grumbling to himself, Mr. Popper went to the door. It was not the postman who stood there. It was an expressman with the largest box Mr. Popper has ever seen. Party by the name of Popper live here? That's me. Well, here's a package that's come Air Express all the way from Antarctica. Some journey, I'll say. Mr. Popper signed the receipt and examined the box. It was co covered all over with markings. Unpack it once, said one. Keep cool, said another. He noticed that the box was punched here and there with air holes. You can imagine that once he had the box inside the house, Mr. Popper lost no time in getting the screwdriver, for by this time, of course, he had guessed what it was, the surprise from Admiral Drake. He had succeeded in removing the outer boards and part of the packaging, which was a layer of dry ice, when from the depths of the packaging case he suddenly heard a faint ork. His heart stood still. Surely he had heard that sound before at the Drake Expedition movies. His hands were trembling so that he could scarcely lift off the last of the wrappings. There was not the slightest doubt about it. It was a penguin. Mr. Popper was speechless with delight, but the penguin was not speechless. Ork! it said again, and this time it held out its flippers and jumped over the packaging debris. It was a stout little fellow, about two and a half feet high. Although it was about the size of a small child, it looked much more like a little gentleman, who, it, with its smooth white waistcoat in front and its long black tailcoat dragging a little behind. Its eyes were set in two white circles in its black head. It turned its head from one side to the other, at first, as first with one eye and then with the other. It examined Mr. Popper. Mr. Popper had read that penguins are extremely curious, and he soon found that this was true, for stepping out, the visitor began to inspect the house. Here's the picture. Down the hall it went and into the bedrooms, with its strange, pompous little strut. When it, or he, Mr. Popper had already began to think of it as a he, got to the bathroom, it looked around for a pleased ex with a pleased expression on its face. Perhaps, thought Mr. Popper, all that white tiling reminds him of the ice and snow at the South Pole. Poor thing, maybe he's thirsty. Carefully, Mr. Popper began to fill the bathtub with cold water. This was a little difficult because the inquisitive bird kept reaching over and trying to bite the faucets with its sharp red beak. Finally, however, he succeeded in getting the tub all filled. Since the penguin kept looking over, Mr. Popper picked it up and dropped it in. The penguin seemed not to mind. Anyway, you're not shy, said Mr. Popper. I guess you've got sort of used to playing around with those explorers at the pole. When he thought the penguin had had enough of a bath, he drew out the stopper. 
He was just wondering what to do next when Janie and Bill burst in from school. Papa, they shouted together at the bathroom door. What is it? It's a South Pole penguin sent to me by the Admiral Drake. Look, said Bill, it's marching. The delighted penguin was indeed marching. With little pleased nods of his hands and black head, he was parading up and down the inside of the bathtub. Sometimes he seemed to be counting the steps it took. Six steps for the length, two steps for the width, six steps for the length again, and two more for the width. For such a big bird, he takes awfully small steps, said Bill. And look how his little black coat drags behind. It almost looks as if it were too big for him, said Janie. But the penguin was tired of marching. This time, when it got to the end of the tub, it decided to jump up the slippery curve. Then it turned and with outstretched flippers tobogganed down on its white stomach. They could see that those flippers, which were black on the outside like the sleeves of a tailcoat, were white underneath. Gork! Gork! said the penguin, trying its new game again and again. What's his name, Papa? asked Jeanie. Gork! Gork! said the penguin, sliding down once more on his glossy white stomach. It sounds something like Cook, said Mr. Po Mr. Popper. Why, that's it, of course. We'll call him Cook. Captain Cook. And that ends chapter three. You can like and subscribe to my channel below.